Whoosh, whoosh. Don't know why I did that. I just wanted to do that. I don't even know what I'm doing today. Idea. I'm filming a video talking about visual hallucinations of my experience and what it's like to live with them. Uh, hello, hi, welcome back guys. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I'm a weirdo and I make mental health content. This video is one that I kind of wanted to make a while ago but never actually made and I don't actually have a reason as to why I never made it. I just didn't. I'm in a really strange mood today. What's good? Today I'm talking to you about my own experience with visual hallucinations. Anyone who doesn't know me, hi, I'm Lydia, I'm 20, not for much longer, turning 21 soon. Yay. I have been diagnosed with mental health issues for over five years now. It's continued a lot of my life. Today I'm talking about something that has impacted me since childhood. Something that has now been confirmed as being part of a dissociative disorder that I'm diagnosed with, which is known as derealization. I'm also diagnosed with personalization, they are both dissociative disorders and they are the main things that contribute to my hallucination. Obviously like BPD and anxiety do also play into what I've been told the main cause of it is the dissociative side of things, which makes sense. It, it makes sense. Anyone who doesn't know what dissociative disorder it is, a dissociative disorder is where one dis associates from a situation which basically means disconnects from a situation around them. It's very common among PTSD and can also be a part of other mental health conditions such as mood disorders, psychotic disorders and personality disorder. And obviously dissociative disorders. Hi. <laughs> I'm existing over here. I also dye my hair. Well we'll see. Bing to you too. Damn. The only good thing about where I live in London is you don't hear sirens when I film which means there's not a problem with sirens when I film. The only problem is the underground which is over the left and it's loud. I could go out and film this today. I have no reason to sit and film indoors. Other than it's cold. Like, it's, it's very cold. Do I go out? No. Do I go out? Maybe. This is a video that I put onto a poll thing on my channel. If you don't know what I mean, hit the little notification bell. Uh, I have the community tab now on my channel, meaning I can post polls, pictures, previews, and all that fun stuff. I'm considered a creator now. Thank you, YouTube, for acknowledging my existence. I appreciate it. The poll part on the page has now, at this current moment in time, had a hundred votes. It's a lot of votes. First, I think I need to define what a visual hallucination is, so you know and so we're clear throughout this video, so you don't have to keep checking your definition while I'm talking. A visual hallucination is where you see something that isn't really there. To me, what happens for me is I see things merging and moving and transforming, and the first time that I ever noticed this has happened, I made a video and I will link that in the description down below. Visual hallucinations are scary and I'm not talking about some LSD trip, I'm not talking about some drug trip, I'm talking about real psychiatric issues. I'm not talking about drugs. Um, drug trips and LSD and all that crap I think is wrong. I will never, 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 never support drug use. Just because personal experience with drugs. For me, visual hallucinations are pretty much a daily thing. I live with it on a daily basis. If throughout the day I tend to be okay because it's not as bad. But at night, when I'm in a dark room, I filmed a clip when my last little episode happened with this major episode. It terrified me. It was horrible. Um, I, I see the shadows move. The thing that scares me with the ears is the hand ones like the hands are something that i see you like like that like i see that but there's no one there like physically no one can be in here there is so much security in this bloody building like my door is always locked my window is definitely closed and i have a flat in student halls that have got like stupid amount of security I mean, no one could physically be in here to do that to like put their hands through and why would anyone want to do that why would anyone want to put shadows on my wall for me to see them they would more like to go on the floor and you know yeah me the issue with this is it terrifies me and there was one incident in lancashire where it was the worst and it's never been as bad as that moment that night was single-handedly the most terrifying thing that ever happened to me it was horrible it was hard it was it was easily the most terrifying experience i've ever had with hallucinations um that's a lot to say because i've had some pretty intense experiences and like i say this happens on a daily basis like i see shadows moving and things like making like turning into different shapes and i see that every day that's my norm i can deal with that i can live with it but this one episode i was asleep i had fallen asleep and i woke up about two o'clock in the morning and in my flat it, there was i had an ensuite which appeared locked from the inside you can only lock their doors from the inside my bedroom door was locked my window was open and i woke up and i just kept seeing this door open like, imagine this this 
I'll recreate it a little bit with my door. I'm, I'm a film student, but I'm, how can I really turn? Like, you know what I mean. I'll just demonstrate what, what went on. So I was lying in my bed and the door kept opening and this hand kept coming through. And I swear to you, it literally, like, the shadow of a hand came through the door, flicked on the light switch for the bathroom. And obviously the light was already on in the bathroom, but it flicked it on and then it came back in and I threw something at it and then it did it again and then it locked itself from the inside i literally heard the door lock and my thought was i was like what the fuck who's in that i started shouting i was like get the fuck out my room get the fuck out of my room what are you doing get the fuck out get out my room get out my room get out my room and i was so afraid i was crying i was i was a mess you know i was terrified of what my mind had constructed because it was so real it was it was happening and it was scary and then i kept seeing like these little snowflake things dropping down i kept seeing like water pouring in and I kept feeling like raindrops hit my arm and seeing nothing and I was panicking. I was crying, I was panicking, I was terrified and the first thing I did after screaming for about five minutes was I picked up my phone and I phoned my building security um, and I was like, there's someone in my fucking bathroom and there's someone in there, they keep, they keep doing something, they're gonna do something, they're gonna do something and he came up and he opened the door and he's like, it's not even locked, Lydia, what? So I was like, they locked everything inside. I was like, there's someone, there's gotta be. I was like, I saw them, I physically saw them. And he took me into the kitchen, my flat, and I was very, hello, Mr. Fly. Goodbye, Mr. Fly. Um, I was so panicked and so afraid and terrified and I was crying. I was, I can't put into words how fearful I was in that moment because I was like, but there's gotta be. I did, I couldn't believe that my mind had constructed it. I still didn't at the time. Like, I ended up going to rainy. The security phone the ambulance because it was very obvious that I was not with it. And I appreciate that. I, I do. I wholeheartedly appreciate that. I was an emotional mess that day. I wasn't even there, I was like, I literally, it, I was, I don't show emotions very well. I don't cry around people. I don't, I don't have that kind of emotion in me. I, I find it very hard to be like that, like as upset and terrified as I was, I was crying. And to get me to a point where I'm phoning someone else, to say, hey, there's something gonna happen to me, someone's gonna do something, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I was, not only was I irrational, I was seeing it, like it physically happened, but it didn't. Like to see your own door opening and then see a shadow hand come through, it like was terrifying. And I haven't had anything that intense happen since then because thankfully my bathroom is behind my bed now, which thank the Lord. That episode is something I haven't really spoken about on here before because it has so much, there's so much emotion in it. And it's a very real thing that happened. And now what happens for me is, like I said, I will see shadows, but I'll see them coming from like walls. Like there'll be a wall, imagine this is a wall. I'll see like hands going through there. I'll see movements. I'll see the walls bending in and moving and shaking. And that's what I see physically every night. And it's kind of why I don't like going out alone at the night because I have to do something to distract from the shadows. I do only, I am fortunate, I only really have it with shadows. There are some times where I see like flashing colours and balls of light and whatever, but I can disconnect from that. I do know that that's not real. The shadow thing is, it's quite a hard thing to comprehend and it goes on all the time. And like I said, it's a very, it was a real moment for me. That was, at that point, when that whole episode happened, when I saw someone opening my door and flicking the lights, which and locking the door from the inside, I physically heard this door lock and I saw the door lock go across but it didn't it didn't happen at all like the building security appears and came up and he was like Lydia there's no one there like there's nothing going on like what and I was crying I was like there's someone in there there's like I to be in that much emotional pain and at that point I was like I can't even trust my own thoughts like what if it's playing tricks I got so irrational so quickly and it was around the time that I was really struggling with mental health as a lot of you guys know I had a bit of a hellish start of the year <laughs> I started I mean January to July but I'm doing good now and that moment happened, it happened around three to four days before my last admission to hospital, which as you guys know was the most intense thing that happened to me in July. That episode was a huge point in my life where I was like, I can't even trust what I see. And to honestly to live with it, it's it's hard because there are times where I have to get reassurance from people around me. I'm like, I don't trust shadows. That sounds really bad to say and weird to say I don't trust shadows because 
like I said, my mind makes things transform shapes, which is a normal part of the condition that I'm diagnosed with. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a completely normal thing for me to feel. But it's a very normal thing to deal with, with the conditions I have. And yes, I could go on medication to help it. However, it would mean stopping all the other medication I'm on, which helps a lot. Like, when it's minor, I can deal with it. If it ever got any worse, then yes, I would like go on medication for that. Seeing shadows move, it, it's not the worst. And I'm not saying that I, I like have this major thing going on, it's nothing serious or major, it's my daily life. I, 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 I say it's very hard for me because shadows me, they don't seem real. Because when I look at a shadow, it never looks like the thing it's supposed to be reflecting like the image of. Like if I was to make a shadow with my laptop, I will just demonstrate this. What I see is, it's quite hard to explain actually. I, I just, I can't really, demonstrate. Both sides were waving and shaking. Like I said, I don't trust shadows because what I see isn't accurate. I know it's not accurate. Like that's why I'm capable of living like that. I'm gonna play you a small clip from a few nights ago and you'll see what it's like when I'm... The thing is when I'm tired and when I haven't slept and you know, I'm, I'm feeling emotionally down it obviously inevitably is worse. As with any mental health condition if you're not doing well it's gonna be worse. Like that's just that. I filmed this hallucination episode and I said what I saw and I said how it made me feel and I filmed the wall and I have rewatched the footage I know what it's like and it does show you exactly what I mean. All the shapes are moving, all the shadows are shaking and moving and it's, yeah, I don't know what you're getting lost because it scares me, it scares me, it scares me, it scares me, it scares me. The shadows don't move, they're moving, changing shape. Can you see, you can't even see the shadow moving down the phone, but I can see it in real life, it moves. All I want you to know is if you are struggling with this, and I don't know how many of you are, honestly it's not something I talk about much so I'm presuming not as many of you will, maybe you do, I don't know. This is a very real thing that I struggle with and I know other people do too, I've spoken to some- hello, fly. This fly just like seems to want it's like FaceTime, like hallucinations are easily scary, like they are terrifying. The main issue I've had is I can't turn around and talk to my mom about it because my mom doesn't understand. My mom thinks dissociating is the same as hallucinating, so trying to explain the differences and explain what hallucination is to her, that is what hallucinations are like to me. Um, as for hearing voices and stuff, I only have that kind of hallucination when I'm when I'm not on any medication or if I'm very suicidal. If I'm suicidal, I'm probably hallucinating as well. Hey Mr. Fly. Um, that is all I've got for you guys today. If you would like to hear more stories, let me know in the comments down below. Very happy to carry on doing it. I'm gonna start doing more story times. We're doing a vlogmas this year. Kill me now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm also gonna be doing some Christmas themed videos, which I've already got planned out. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I start Serenity's outro for a third time. I'm a great person, I'm a great girlfriend. For those of you don't know who Serenity is, Serenity is my girlfriend. Uh, if you haven't already, buy my book. It's a thing, I have a book. I wrote a book. The link's in the description down below. And uh, make sure you have the notifications turned on because you'll be able to vote in which video you wanna see next. Um, I hope you're doing amazing, and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Also, ignore the fact my hands are red. I dye my hair, obviously. Anyway, I'm gonna go and edit this and blow this and then cry. <laughs> Follow me on my socials, that's what I needed to do. Follow me on my socials. <laughs> I could never be a beauty guru. Like, let's, let's be real, I could never be a beauty guru. I'm too much of a flop for that. Everybody do the flop. Boo brain, no. My brain's knowing at the moment. Uh, I hope you are doing amazing and I wish you all the best for the current future. That was a very weird outro. I need to leave. I need to just stop. Bye guys. <laughs>